We've been talking about the post-resurrection appearances of Jesus, and we'll continue to talk about them as weeks go by. Of course, we'll take a break for next week because that's Mother's Day, and then we'll pick it back up after that. But tomorrow's sermon is entitled, Guess Who's Coming to Dinner? Yes, it is a direct ripoff of the film of that same name. Uh, and just as in that movie, it was a startling thing who came to dinner. This is a startling thing that Jesus comes. We talked about that yesterday, how they were startled and heart beating and frightened and that kind of thing. After he demonstrates to them who he is and calms them down with his peace, he tells them uh, some very interesting things. In verse 44, he says, Now he said to them, These are my words which I spoke to you, while I was still with you, that all things which are written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Of course, he's talking about the totality of the Old Testament. Some people, oh, which verses is he talking about? He's talking about the whole story of the Old Testament, the whole uh, story of God's rescue of his creation. All of that is what he's talking about. That He is the central focus of that story. He is the one who is to redeem Israel. He is the one uh, to uh, break the bonds of the dark powers and to set us free from the bondage of death and sin and the enslavement of it through his death and resurrection. He talks about that. Then it says this, then he opened their minds. That word opens, you know, we've talked about that before. It means to open completely, not just a little bit, but to open it completely. He opened their minds and it's he's the one who's opening their minds to understand the scripture. It has to be God who teaches us, who opens our minds to understand. Can we comprehend God's word? Absolutely. But he is the one who enables us. He opens our mind so that we may comprehend this whole wonderful story of what went wrong, what was lost in the Garden of Eden, what was lost in creation, God's loving rescue operation of rescuing not just humanity, but his, all of his creation, his good creation that he is rescuing from the dark powers and liberating us in the process that we can be who we're supposed to be. So he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ, or Messiah, would suffer and rise again from the dead the third day, and that repentance for forgiveness of sins would be proclaimed in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem, you are witnesses of these things. Two things I want to say. One, he calls them witnesses. You are witnesses. Interestingly, that word that is used there is translated witness is uh, where we get our English word martyr, uh, martyria. Uh, and it means uh, it was one who was called to testify in court to ascertainable facts, to give assent to ascertainable facts. What facts were they called to give an assent to? The fact that the scriptures are open to them, that the Christ must suffer these things, die and rise from the dead on the third day, be resurrected, in other words. And there is nowhere in Greek mythology or in stories, novels, there is nowhere in Jewish history where this happens. This is something new. This is something, in spite of what you may hear, in spite of what people may say, this never happens. This is something brand new. This whole idea of someone coming back to life in a physical body, different but the same, and having life after life after death, as N.T. Wright terms it. So that's brand new. But he says you are a uh, to give testimony to this because you can give witness to the ascertainable facts. You find these facts in Scripture. They are reasonable. It is not something that we jump blindly by faith into. Is faith required? Sure. Faith is required in mathematics as well. Different kind of faith, but faith nonetheless. Um, so, these are ascertainable facts. You can find this stuff out if you want to read the stories. Not only the gospel accounts, not only the epistles in the New Testament, but also the extra-biblical sources that are there. Uh, the stories that are told. Yes, you can find this information out. Yes, it is unassailable. It has been for 2,000 years. Um, no one has defeated it. It is simply the truth. And he says, you are my witnesses to all the nations. And what does that mean? It means not just to Israel. It's going to begin in Jerusalem. It's going to begin in the capital city of Israel. But it's going to move out from there to the entire world. All people. 
are invited. Every nation uh, is invited to come. Uh, and that you would proclaim as a witness we have a job. To do what? To proclaim in the name of Jesus forgiveness of sins, a turning away from sin, and repentance for, the given, for forgiveness of sin. Uh, and it's done in his name. Now, what does that mean? It means on the basis of who he is, on the basis of what he has accomplished. Um, he is the Messiah. He is the suffering servant. He is the one who was crushed under the weight of the suffering of the world and won it back, defeated the dark powers, defeated death, and has given that to us who are believers in him and who are born again. So it's a remarkable, wonderful story to tell. It is good news, but we have a job to do too. We have a new life to live. We have a, a good news to proclaim, and we're to bear this testimony. Now, I started to say this a while ago, and I got sidetracked, uh, I think because there's a bee flying around in here. But um, Martyr uh, came to me, whereas before it was one who was called in court to give testimony to ascertainable facts, it came to mean one who suffers because of their faith, because of their beliefs. That was a Christian term. So many Christians suffered um, even death, suffered physically, suffered economically, and suffered death that the word itself took on a new meaning in Greek vocabulary. It came to mean one who um, suffers for his beliefs. And if I were to go to someone today and say, hey, what does martyr mean? They would say, well, it means one who suffers for their beliefs or is persecuted, that kind of thing. But well, that's not what it meant to begin with. That is the proof of the fact that these men and women went about being witnesses to the truth of who Jesus is, that they suffered for it. Um, they sacrificed for it. Some of them gave their lives for that truth. Um, and in the midst of all of that, Jesus said, I am with you, be at peace, here's the truth, um, proclaim this to all the nations. So, yes, it's a startling event, it's a startling thing. Uh, someone has said, Jesus is the only person who came back from the dead and nobody was scared. Don't kid yourself, I've heard comedians say that. It's not true. They were terrified, the words that are used there, they were terrified of that. He shows them the truth, he calms them down, he grants them Shalom, peace, nothing lacking. They're at ease, they're at peace, um, and they're at rest, and they are able to go out and be his witnesses. But there's one more thing that needs to be done. Behold, I'm sending forth the promise of my Father upon you, but you are to stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. What's he talking about? The indwelling of the Holy Spirit, the empowering indwelling of the Holy Spirit to accomplish the mission that he has for us to accomplish to live out the vocation of bearing the image of God in the world, of showing forth his love, his grace, his mercy, and testifying to the truth of who Jesus is. I look forward to our sermon tomorrow. I'm excited about it uh, and talking about uh, this surprise guest at dinner time uh, that, the, that the 11 and the other followers of Christ uh, met uh, on, that, on that first day of the week, that evening. And, uh, and I look forward to getting back together with you on Mother's Day right now. We're still shooting for Mother's Day. If that changes, we will get the word out and let you know. Remember, we have two services, 9.30 to 10.30, 11 o'clock to 12 o'clock. Um, A through L, if your name ends in one of those letters alphabetically, come to the 9.30 service. If it's, uh, if it's after that, uh, M, if you begins with M through Z, I had to run through the alphabet in my mind. M through Z, maybe you're not like that, but I am. Uh, M through Z, you come to the 11 o'clock service. Maybe we'll swap that out. We have to do this for several Sundays. Maybe we'll swap that out. And if you were that this week, then we'll swap it over next week. I don't know. We're still working things out. Bear with us. Work with us on that. We're trying. Once again, there will be no Sunday school for at least a couple more weeks. No Sunday night. No Wednesday night. Um, we are expecting to hear some more uh, from Governor Lee. Uh, I've got a meeting uh, at our associational office uh, with Brother Jack Long uh, Monday, Monday morning, uh, Monday afternoon, uh, that we're going to be talking about this. But right now, we are planning on having worship together. The saints gathered at Troy First Baptist Church uh, on Mother's Day. Look forward to that. God bless you. I love you. More importantly, Jesus loves you. Gave his life. You might have forgiveness of sin. 
eternal life, and joy indescribable right here and right now. I pray that you know that. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow online at 930 on our YouTube channel.